FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's January 3rd. Man, hard to believe we're already in the new year. Lots of things happening. Markets, will they continue to go up? What will happen with Trump's agenda? Hey, before we get started, as always, we'd love for you to be part of the show. Just email us, kl at kerrylutz.com or use the Twitter feed at kerrylutz. So we're returning to normalcy now. The holidays are over. What of Trump's agenda? Well, former Congressman John LeBoutlier is with us now. John, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Carrie, and all your listeners. And uh, let's hope 2018 is a great year for our country and a healthy year for everybody and for the country as a whole, too. Always, always. You know, it just uh, hey, time goes by. And what's important now turns out not to be so important later on. Things change, but uh, somehow the country struggles on. So we may we got through a really momentous year. I mean, there was so much going on that the the news media, the Fifth Estate, is really uh, majorly burned out. They just can't keep up with it. Uh, there's so many targets. You know, it's like the ducks are popping up all over, and they're like passed out at the switch. Well, I suppose that's true. Um, you know, Trump is a continually moving object. It's always moving from one issue to another and back to another one and changing and his position. So you're, you're flabbergasted over what's going on. And then you wake up and it's a year has gone by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do and you believe and it? <laughs> I, I, I've been thinking about it a lot as the year came to an end. I, I go back to the Reagan era and Reagan, Reagan was a nice guy and a conservative and what often happened with him was he was extremely personally popular among the American people, but his agenda was not that popular. Uh, polls showed it at the time. He was more popular than his positions on issues. Trump is the mirror opposite of that. His positions are quite popular, but he's not popular. He has affected a persona uh, that's quite toxic to, to 60% of the country. But it didn't prevent him from getting a lot of stuff done I mean, one way or the other. We've, we've read the laundry list. Obviously, the big legislative accomplishment was his tax cut thing. But he got federal court judges, including a Supreme Court justice on. And he de he's deregulating in EPA and elsewhere quite effectively. And cut the growth of the federal workforce, which has been a bugaboo of the right for years, which is shrinking government. And I, you know, I think he's got a conservative policy agenda cooking along. And that is quite popular. But he is so out there and so in your face and just so overwhelming that he's overwhelming the good news. Oh, I, the other big thing is the decline or defeat of ISIS. That's huge. Yeah. Uh, we, we shouldn't forget that. That's another accomplishment. Yet the public is like just, you know, 60 percent don't, don't like Trump and 50 some odd percent don't like the direction of the country. And it's because of him. If he would cool it a little bit, be a little softer and nicer, I think his ratings would go right up. Oh, uh, well, you know, in a way, he's really the mirror image of Obama, too. Everyone loved yeah. Obama. Yeah. But they really, I think a large portion, over 50 percent of the country really despised what he was trying to do to the country, what he did to the country. And yeah. here we find it. So in the final analysis, though, tax reform passed. There's definitely a lot more winners than losers. Is that going to be enough for 2018 for the for the midterm elections? Boy, I wish I knew. Uh, I mean, we you know, it's 11 months away. So anybody who t can tell you what's going to happen should be ha handsomely compensated. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say this, as of January 3rd, there are more <clears throat> good trend lines politically now for the election for the Democrats in this November than there are for Republicans. A, a number of them are this. The, uh, Trump's not on the ballot this year, and Trump has a very committed base of around 37 percent. They love Trump. But Trump's not on the ballot in these congressional races, of course. And I don't know that that 37 percent is going out in great numbers for Congressman Joe Blow, who might be a Republican, but he's not a Trump. 
And meanwhile, the Democrats are really uh, enraged at Trump. You saw it in Alabama in the Roy Moore special election. You saw it in the November off-year elections. The higher than expected, higher than normal Democratic turnout among women voters, minority voters, and young voters. <clears throat> That's the Democratic base. And if they do that this November against a somewhat lethargic Republican base, I think the Democrats are going to have a pretty good year. Whether they win control of either house, it's, it's, you can't tell yet. Well, the odds of them taking the Senate, probably not so great because they've got 25 seats to defend, many of them in states that were red states that went overwhelmingly for Trump. And the uh, Republicans only have eight seats, of which two are somewhat in doubt. So yeah. it's going to they have an uphill battle there. And when we go back to the House, uh, gerrymandering, uh, you know, has kept the Republicans in power here with one brief two year hiatus uh, during uh, the Bush administration. But it's kept them in there. It's, you know, John, it's amazing to think it's actually it's a it's generation actually four years. It was the it was yeah. four years. We, we lost the House in 2006. We got it back in 2010. It was right. four years. Right. So that was one anomalous period where people were really war weary and disgusted with the Bush administration. And right. And then we got know, we had the census in 2010. Right. Redistricting in 2011 and 12. And that should shore up a lot. But there are we, the Democrats need 24 seats to take over. There are 23 seats that Republicans hold in <laughs> districts that Hillary won last year in 2016. So that's their number one target. And there are a bunch of Republican retirements. And there is huge money. The Democrats are raising money like crazy for the House and have a lot of candidates and in districts that they normally don't even have any candidates. So I, I feel that this energy, I call it the passion differential, carry. that mm -hmm. which side in an election is more passionate? Usually the passion is against something, you know, negative. Right now, the Democrats are really mad. They hate Trump. They're PO'd like crazy. And that's now. It's January. We don't know. Maybe this tax cut thing will really result in a much better economy and will anesthetize a lot of people. And they'll be sort of happy by November and won't be so ticked off. That, that's what you're counting on if you're a Republican. Yeah. But right now, that's not the case. But right now, there's no election. So. Yeah, that's true. And a lot can happen. As we know, 11 months is an eternity in politics and things can change on a dime. And you got to believe that uh, what James Carville said, it's the economy, stupid. That that trumps everything. No pun intended. Yeah. Nick Nixon used to say it, that the two keys to elections are uh, prosperity at home and peace abroad. Mm -hmm. And if you have both, the incumbent party is going to win uh, mm -hmm. more often than not. Yeah. So we'll see. But uh, that's really more for the presidential race. In an off-year election, which we're going to have this year, mm -hmm. it's a base election. Which base is more energized to come out and vote? And uh, as I said a few minutes ago, the Trump base is not, in my view, as energized to vote for some dumb Republican congressman. Whereas the Democrats, they're all coming out, Gary, in my yeah. view, to vote against Trump. They they hate Trump and they're that's all. They don't have to have a positive Democratic message and all that stuff. They just are voting against Trump. That's why. Mm -hmm. in a, and, and here's a worrisome thing right now. now it could mm -hmm. change by November. Uh, on December 12th in that Alabama Senate race, they we know who voted. Mm -hmm. And the exit polls showed that Donald Trump, who had won that state a year earlier with 62 mm percent, -hmm. his approval and disapproval was 48 approve of his job as president, 48 disapprove. He has gone from 62 percent down to 48 percent. Mm -hmm. In the most red state in the country. Yeah. That's a worrisome thing that he needs to address. And then came this poll this week from in Iowa. He won Iowa by 10 points against Hillary. His approval rating in Iowa is down at 35 percent. Mm -hmm. So there's some and he's down in the 60s among Republicans. There is erosion going on that needs to be arrested. And I personally think that the erosion comes from Trump's personal manner, that he offends people, that he behaves a little bit over the top. And mm -hmm. he needs to scale that back, as I said, be a little nicer, a little softer, less in your face, 
and let his accomplishments speak for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, he certainly has accomplished more than anybody could have reasonably expected here. Would, would you have thought it was possible? Uh, oh, I would, because he's got everything. He's got a Republican House and a Republican Senate. I think he's accomplished very little legislatively. I think he has accomplished. He, I th we knew right from the get-go that he had an A, an a level cabinet, a, a C-level White House staff to begin. But the cabinet was good. And there were some major league people in that cabinet. <clears throat> and he got up and running, and they did the deregulating. And then his bet noir, for some reason, early on, he was trashing Mitch McConnell all the time. Mitch McConnell changed the filibuster rule to get these judges through, including Neil Gorsuch. I mean, that's the biggest accomplishment of Trump with the longest lasting, you know, permanent impact is to put young conservatives on the federal courts. They will last a generation. Mm. And that's because of Mitch McConnell, period. And I don't know why Trump chose, as usual, the trashster guy. Yeah, well, they seem to be buddy-buddy the last time I saw them together in the uh, White House after the tax bill yeah. had passed. True, so, true. I, you know, maybe Trump will grow an office. Uh, hey, look at what he's done on the regulatory front. Originally, he set out to repeal one regulation for everyone or two for everyone that got passed. He wound up somewhere, depending who you hear, for either 16 or 22 to one. Uh, right. That's all the ca that's the good cabinet that yeah. he gave Scott Pruitt. EPA said, go to go to it. Mm -hmm. And Pruitt can do it. And he's been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've, uh, yeah. So, and others and taking over the CFPB, which has really been uh, really yeah. kryptonite to the economy, you know. Why don't we, and I see what I would like to say, mm. while we have the House and Senate, why don't we abolish that board? We don't need that place. Yeah. The, the, the functions of it are already existing in other departments. And it's yeah. a, Elizabeth Warren created waste and now, the next step would be not just to have our guy running it, um, mm -hmm. Nick Mulvaney, but why not abolish it? Hey, you're, you're preaching to the choir here because uh, yeah, yeah. really it's it's there's nothing that that agency has been charged with that another agency wasn't already responsible for. Uh, whether it's right. mortgages, whether it's uh, credit cards. You know, there's agencies, thousands of uh, bureaucrats there that are supposed to be regulating this stuff. And yet only the CFPB can do it. And, you know, Richard Cordray was just uh, out of control bureaucrat for sure. Really. No, he was using it to run for governor of Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the guy was just really, you know, power crazed, power mad. And they, the way they set that agency up to have zero accountability is also pretty shocking. Yeah. So, well, anyway, so look, I think the year was a good year, but um, looking ahead to the future, there are troublesome spots here that Trump himself has caused by his overwhelming personality. And he ought to cool it a little bit. He won't but <laughs> just uh, analyzing. Cause you asked me what 2018 portends and, Mm -hmm. legislatively, you know, they're going to meet this weekend in Camp David, the, the Republican congressional leadership, and mm -hmm. try to figure out what is the agenda for this year. Paul Ryan wants to do entitlement reform, which, by the way, has to be done. Oh, we know but that. Trump, every time he was asked as a candidate, said, I'm not touching uh, Social Security or Medicare. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think he will stick with that. He will not touch them. So if he won't touch it, that's not an agenda item. Obviously, infrastructure is an agenda item. Yeah. And how much of that they're going to be able to do this year, I don't know, because it's an election year and the Democratic base says to their leadership, do not work with Trump. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see if that's going to go anywhere. The odds are there won't be much happening this year. Well, but in an election year, they don't really do much. They, the time to do it was last year. Yeah, the first hundred days really is where you have the biggest opportunity, but he never got the honeymoon. But uh, on the other hand, no congressman or senator ever didn't get elected because they brought money back to their district in the form of infrastructure projects. So they might very well go against their base knowing that uh, the benefits far outweigh the costs. They, they might, you know, they might. Very uh, you know, and then but then there's going to be anyway, it's the normal stuff. It's going to be, you know, are Republicans willing 
Um, and I think most of them are, but are they willing to, to spend more money that we don't have another trillion yeah. on top of the trillion and a half debt from the tax cut that just passed? Are they willing to go into further debt after running as deficit hawks when Obama was president? Now that they're in charge, they're happily running up more debt. Can they survive that politically? Probably, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, to build stuff in their districts, they probably would like to do it. Yeah, that, that needs to be done in a lot of instances. Hopefully it won't uh, resemble the porculous bill passed by the Democrats uh, during Obama's... Uh, the shovel, the shovel-ready yeah. stimulus plan. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> which he jokes about years later, Obama. Well, I guess those projects weren't quite as shovel-ready as we thought. <laughs> And, and that's, yeah, that's, 940 yeah. billion down the toilet. Literally, you know, uh, but we did yep. get, uh, we did manage to get incandescent bulbs banned. So now we're all using LED bulbs. So I guess, uh, I guess the ends justify the means. Hey, one thing uh, that I know uh, you've watched is the transportation uh, department, Trump going there and literally cutting up uh, regulations himself to get these projects through, which take, 10 to 20 years to get a road built with federal help. I mean, it's madness at what's what's That's happened there. All these pre-approvals and environmental roadblocks and stuff has got to be streamlined. Now, the famous press conference after Charlottesville in the lobby of Trump Tower, mm. where Trump was uh, got off text, you know, off script and started talking about what had happened two days earlier in Charlottesville. Mm. That press conference was to unveil a streamlined series of environmental checks that you have to go through to to, to get these projects uh, through faster. And he unveiled two scrolls, one that was like eight feet long, showing all the roadblocks on the way to building something. Mm -hmm. And then the streamlined Trump version was the new one that he was proposing with Elaine Chow there. I went to school with Elaine Chow. She mm -hmm. married to Mitch McConnell, and right. she and I went to business school together. And mm -hmm. she's the secretary of transportation and knows her stuff. And they've got this streamlined game plan on how to get these things approved. And that should be what the president of the United States uh, talks about a lot. Because the public will nod their heads when they hear and go, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Democrats will go, yeah, that's good. Mm hmm uh, but he, he easily gets off track and gets yeah. sidelined by relitigating Charlottesville three days in a row. Yeah, not a, not a wise move. Well, hey, like we say, the economy if it's uh, if it's growing at four to five percent, that could make all the difference in uh, in the elections coming everything, up. Everything, everything, everybody's yeah. view, and you know. Look, look at the Christmas retail season. And I'm not saying that all of this is necessarily good for the economy in the long run, but, you know, record Christmas sales. Uh, first time there was a big increase, you know, in nearly a decade. And that's indicative of something uh, happening there. Definitely. No, it's good. Whether we get to 4%, 5%, I don't know. But we're at 3% now for two quarters in a row. So that's mm -hmm. good. Let's see what the next last quarter of 2017 was like and see if it's going to sustain itself. Let's hope it does. Yeah. I think, uh, I think the fourth quarter going to exceed, I mean, the flash rating from the New York fed said somewhere around 3.7 or 8%. So they've got the most up to date relevant uh, economic status statistics of any one out there the fed yeah good well what we want that <laughs> and, and don't forget along with the growing economy it then generates more tax revenue for the states localities and federal government mm -hmm. to alleviate some of the debt and pay for some of these things too so yeah yeah well you know, it's uh, interesting times for sure. Hey, we, we didn't even get into the geopolitical things. We could do that next time. But uh, but a lot's happening in Iran now. If Iran, uh, if the theocracy fa falls or fails, uh, that's that's really another Trump uh, foreign policy victory. Well, I, I would be it would be epic if that government could fall. It would be fantastic. Yeah, well. We're uh, we're in the early stages. We're in the uh, 
maybe bottom of the first inning as far as Iran's concerned. It's it's a process, but it's picking up steam. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. These things happen so quickly, and there doesn't appear to be any central organization in this uprising. So just have to know. Anyway, uh, John, uh, where's the best place to find you these days? Uh, my website is John Laboot, one word, J O H N L E B O U T, JohnLaboot.com. All right. And we'll have a link to it in the show notes to this uh, interview on FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Hey, take a look at our, uh, our Facebook page, Financial Survival Network, and uh, the Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz. And we welcome your emails. John, we'll talk to you again real soon. It's going to be an interesting Great, year Carrie. ahead. All right. So happy 2018. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 